I grew up in a war-torn country. We were always playing with little tanks, like you were pretending you were armies. And then before you know it, like you hear and you turn left and a whole bunch of real tanks, 50, 60 of them are actually on the street next to you and going into the war. And then you hear the sirens going on and you see your parents are panicking. Hey, come to the house, come inside, hurry, hurry, hurry. 10 seconds later, there's like a big explosion happens like two miles from you, like boo. You don't know what it is. I remember I found salvation in watching movies. I went to my parents and I said, you know that I'm gonna be a filmmaker, you know, mom, I'm gonna do this and that action movie and thriller and crime and comedies and everything. And they were just like looking at me and what's wrong with this kid, you know? You, don't think about filmmaking because it's impossible. People just didn't have ambition, no ambition, you know, during war. Everybody just wanted to survive. For me to make movies, I understood that I have to find a way to come to the United States of America. But how can I get to the States? My family has no money. We don't have any relatives living in the States. And during the war, the people of my country burned down the U.S. Embassy. How to go to America, it's impossible, you know? One day I learned that U.S. universities are offering full scholarship for prospective student athletes. So I understood. For me to become a filmmaker, I first had to become an athlete. The biggest race of my life. And this is the chance for me to run a fast time to get the attention from America. But two weeks before my race, I completely tore my ligaments. I remember the doctor looking at my ankle and I was like, in two weeks I have to run. And he looks at me. He said, this guy is crazy, you're not gonna run. He says, if you can walk within two months, you should consider yourself lucky. That night I go home, I place my ankle in 90 degrees and I press my ankle against the wall. And I start talking to my ankle. You know, I'm talking to my ankle. I wanna become a friend with my ankle. You know, my life depends on this. I wanna convince my ankle that we can do it. Two, three days later, I go and I run for one hour. After that, I couldn't walk the whole day. I go back home and I ice it, massage it. 14 days after my injury, I ran a race. I came first place, I ran a personal record, and thanks to that race, I got a scholarship. I came to America without speaking any English and without knowing anybody. If I say that I need $10 million to make a movie, that it's just an excuse. I should be able to create something just relying on my creativity and willpower. David. How's it going, man? <laughs> Looking good, man. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Well, you know, I was looking for opportunities how to utilize the resources that I have available. And I was very lucky when I met David because not only does he have everything, but he's also a police officer. LAPD, put your hands up where we can see them. Where's your permit? That's what I like to ask. Right. <laughs> you got a permit to be out here with the hey, Look at this face, man. I can't do this. <laughs> this is amazing, man. Thanks, David. The actors in the movie, they grew up in very harsh circumstances. I was like a soldier, you know, in a war. I, I dreamed about it, you know, getting shot, big old shootout with people. I became a gang member like at 13 years old. I got incarcerated at 13 years old and it's not because I wanted to, I think it's because I was kind of limited of what I could really be. All the effort, the details, the, the raw emotions we put into this film, like we shot in East LA. I remembered it. Remember this? I remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> we spend lots of time in a family that lives in a neighborhood where your only option to be safe is to join the gang. The shot in their house. This is Angel. He's the big star of the film, right? Remember? Yes. Yeah, like did amazing work. Sarah, Hi. she's the boss of the house. She helped tremendously. Jacob, he's a little bit shy, but you know, once he warms up, he's amazing. And precious, beautiful. She was in a classroom scene and she did so well. They invited me to film in their house. They went above and beyond to help me to make a movie. There's like 20 people living in one house. They're like gunshots outside, car chase, the helicopter, the police chase. But inside is so warm, such a family atmosphere. It really reminded me of a bond that I had with my neighbors during the war. I noticed how people reacted to you, you know, and they seen genuinely uh, pleased, you know, with your presence and, and accepted you. And I think it's because of who you are. Awesome, oh my God, thank you guys for this opportunity. Why don't we do 
See you guys. Bye. See ya. Thank you. See you soon, okay? It was you, bro. Like, you did it. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's a huge accomplishment, bro. I'm an actor, but striving to be a filmmaker, I could do nothing but think of you as an inspiration, you know? Because you, you, you did it, bro. When I decided to make this movie, I wanted to create such a visual experience that can compete against studio-level movies. And I want to win.